Hey everyone, it's Tiara of Cooking to a T. Welcome to my first cooking video. I'm so excited to share this recipe with you guys. Today, I'm gonna to be making my Jamaican beef patties. I love me a good, a good beef patty. And I order from the Jamaican spot all the time, but I needed to find a way to make them myself because one, that money adds up after a while, and two, I just wanna learn how to make it, right? Um, I'm going to show you how I make them step by step. A lot of the ingredients I'm using you probably already have, but if you don't have them, they're super inexpensive at the store. Um, also, for my diabetes folks, this is not a low-carb recipe. So, bolus as you need to. I know I, I had to, um, but make sure you count those carbs. Um, when it comes to exact measurements, don't worry. I am going to have them on my website. You can go to cookingtoatea.com and it will be under recipes and you'll see them um, right when you go on that that page so let's get started okay so to start we're gonna we're gonna start working on the crust now the one thing about Jamaican beef patties is it has like the super great curry flavored ish flaky crust that I love so much and to start with that we're gonna use some flour so this is about um, a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Again, like exact measurements will be in the recipe. I'm starting out with some all-purpose flour, some curry powder, turmeric, sugar, and salt. Then I'll blend them all together in my food processor. Okay, so after you mix the flour, the curry powder, turmeric, salt, and sugar, you're gonna start adding some of your wet ingredients. So that's gonna be the apple cider vinegar, the cold butter, and the ice cold water. It's really important that you have your butter and your water to be very cold as well as your shortening um, because it's that, it's those ingredients being cold gives it that flaky crust that we really like. So you wanna make sure that they're cold up until you're ready to use them. To my flour mixture, I'm adding some ice cold water, apple cider vinegar, some butter, and my shortening. After which, I'll blend them all together until it forms a nice ball of dough, just like this. Okay, so I just finished making the crust dough, and this is how it's gonna look. So it's going to look something like this. Like, I'm not worried about like the, the little extra pieces. I don't know if you guys can see. So I'm not really worried about the extra pieces here because I'm just going to fold it all in together anyway. Um, but as you can see, like there's like this nice golden color and that's from the turmeric and the curry. And also like as you like make it, you can also smell the curry too, which is smells so good. I'm rolling out the dough on a well-floured surface. This is extremely important so the dough doesn't stick to the counter. I'm rolling it out until it's about a quarter of an inch thick and I'm not really worried about the uniformity of the dough because I like a rustic look to my patties. However, if that's important to you, feel free to roll it out as neat as you'd like it. After I roll it out, I'm transferring it to a, to a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. This is gonna go inside of the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Um, just so it can kind of have some time to kind of firm up and set a little bit. And while this is chilling in the fridge, I'm going to start working on the meat filling. Okay, now it's time to work on the meat filling. I have a pound of 80-20 ground beef. I have a quarter cup of diced onion and one clove of garlic. I have my spice mix and this spice mix is onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, parsley, allspice, cayenne pepper. I know I'm missing like a couple other things. Curry powder is in here. And I think that's about it. But again, they'll be on the website. Uh, normally I would put dry thyme in here, but I'm out of it today. So um, I would add about like a teaspoon of dry thyme to the spice mix. And I also have a uh, half a cup of panko breadcrumbs to kind of think the things up. You'll see what I mean shortly. And I have about uh, 
a, a cup of chicken broth. You could also use beef broth or, or vegetable broth. Um, if you're someone that's watching your sodium content, go for low sodium or reduced sodium. Um, and if you don't want any kind of extra flavorings from broth, you can forego it and just use water, but you may want to make it up with a little extra seasonings at the end or taste as you go. I'm starting out with some olive oil and then I'm going to add my ground beef, which I'll cook over medium heat. As I cook the ground beef, I'm going to start chopping up into tiny pieces before I add in the garlic and onion. Once I add in the garlic and onion, the beef should be about this color. This is to ensure that the garlic and onion don't burn. We don't want that. After I stir in the garlic and onion, I'll add in my spice mix and stir that up. Then I'll add in my pinko breadcrumbs, make sure that's well combined. And then I'll add in my salt and pepper. Definitely want to taste this part and make sure it's seasoned the way you like. After that, I'll add in my beef broth or chicken broth or vegetable broth, whichever one I'm using at the time. Then I'll just make sure that's stirring and it's cooking over medium low heat. Okay, so I'm gonna let this meat filling just chill for a little bit. I just wanna kind of cool off before I start making like the actual patty. Um, I have the oven preheating to 375 and it's just about time to take the crust out maybe in about five-ish minutes while I kind of clean up a little bit. Um, and then once this is kind of cooled down a bit, it's, I can start folding everything into the patties. I'm so excited. Um, Y'all, it smells so good in my kitchen right now. I can just smell the 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 clothes and the allspice and that curry powder. Like, it just smells amazing. I can't wait to eat it. I remember the first time I made this, I just like ate a lot of the beef out of the pan on like a piece of bread because I, I couldn't wait. So, but I did still have some left for patties. Um, all right, let's move on to the next step and let's start filling up these crusts. I'm using a bowl that's about six and a half inches in diameter. This is gonna help me make at least four patties. I'm not worried about the shape because I like a rustic look to them. However, you wanna ball up the remaining dough and roll it out to repeat this process. After transferring to a baking sheet, I'm brushing each, each crust with egg wash, and then I'm filling each crust with at least two tablespoons of meat. Uh, I'm careful to not overfill because I wanna make sure that I'm able to fold over each patty. Now I'm starting to form the patties. I'm folding over the other half of the crust over the meat and gently doing this on the baking sheet. This is so I minimize the risks of having the patties inadvertently fall apart when trying to transfer them from the cutting board to the baking sheet. I've learned this the hard way. Trust me, you wanna do this on the baking sheet itself. Afterward, I'm going to start sealing each crust with a fork. You can also roll uh, roll the crust or you can just sort of press it down with your fingers. I personally like to use a fork because it just adds to the flaky texture that I really like from beef patties. Okay, so here are my patties. This is the more rustic one I was talking about earlier, but for the others you can see, or for all of them, you can see that I used a fork to seal them. And this is how they'll look when um, when they go into the oven. The oven has been preheated to 375 and I'm gonna cook them for about 30, 30, 35 minutes until they're, you know, nice and brown, like nice and like golden brown and they're kind of puffed up a little bit. Um, but okay, so that was super easy. So into the oven they go. Okay, so my patties are done. They were in the oven for about 35 minutes and this is the end result. Yay, patties. So um, I'm gonna, I let them cool for a little bit but they are still pretty warm. So let's take this one. As you can see like some of the crust kind of popped open there, but this is what the patty comes out to look like. So just like a patty that you will buy at the store. So I'm gonna take a bite. 
It's kind of hot still. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm going for. You can see. I don't know how much y'all can see, but there's like a little flakiness that's going on here. So you can see how flaky this crust is. Super good. And all that beef is in there too. Mm. I love the way these patties turned out. I'm going to go finish the one I was just eating. And I'm going to put the others into the refrigerator. I'm going to let them cool down a little bit though. Put the other ones into the refrigerator. Once you make the patties, instead of putting them into the oven, you can put them directly into the freezer before, like if you're not ready to make them just yet. So know that you don't have to bake these right away. Whatever you have left over, you can just put it right straight into the freezer and then pop them in the oven for about 35 minutes at 375 and you're good to go. Um, the recipe is on my website at cookingtoatea.com. Go to recipes and you'll find this Jamaican beef patty recipe. I hope that you enjoy it. Play around with it. Let me know what other things that you try. Please let me know how this recipe came out for you. I'm super excited to start um, creating these cooking videos. My friends and I have been talking about, or my friends and I have been talking about me doing these videos and I'm super excited to be able to finally bring uh, my favorite recipes to you. Um, please click the subscribe button um, right below. Click subscribe um, and then you'll get a new recipe video every week. Okay guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.